Hello everybody, welcome back to Alan Wall's Photography. This is Alan and today we're going to do part two of a video that I did last year, or yesterday, uh, on how to configure your stack shot. In this video we're going to be looking at the different program modes, basically how to use your stack shot once you have it configured. <music> started thank you again to my patreon supporters and the people that have helped me through donations on the website thanks to your generosity I am able to do this work and I do appreciate you hugely so this is part two of a two-part series on setting up your stack shot if you did not watch the first video which is linked right here I would suggest you do look at that first because I'll be referring to some of the things we discussed in that video as we go through this one. The stack shot comes configured with seven program modes. And I'm going to go through each of those program modes and explain to you what it does and why it does it and why you might want to use it. And in some cases, why you might not want to even bother. The first, the best, and the most obvious way to use this device is in auto distance mode. The reason is because in auto distance mode, you set the step length in microns. You also set the position that the stack begins and the position that it ends. So in auto distance, we we'll use the select button to set our step length. Let's increase it to something larger so that we can actually see it. Well, maybe put it up to about a millimeter should be fine. That's close enough. So then we select our start position. We use the back to move the, the rail closer to the motor to find our closest point of focus. Once we find it, we press the up button. Then we select our end position by using the forward button until the last part of the image that we need in focus is sharply in focus. As soon as that is, that's our full distance set. And then all we have to do is hit up or down to start. It'll give us the option of up or down in this case, and it'll move forward. And then this is what happens. The rail moves back to the beginning point. It fires a shot moves again, fires a shot, and that's the basic mode. Hit any button and that will abort it. The reason I've shown you the auto distance first is because it's what I use. And if you understand that, I think you'll have a, a clear understanding of why many of the other modes don't make a whole lot of sense, at least to me. I do hope that if you're using other modes and have found some really good reason to use them, that you'll get in touch and tell me what they are so that I can use them too. But I haven't found much of a, a use for many of them. So let's use the select button to get back up to the mode. And now using the uh, up and down key, it will cycle through the modes that are available. So the next mode is called total distance. Total distance, we pick a number of steps and a total distance, in this case, 10 millimeters, a centimeter long, it's gonna take 10 steps. So uh, there's nothing else we need to do, uh, except go to start up or down. Now, if you hit the up button, it will go through this one millimeter distance, I beg, yeah, 10 millimeter distance in the forward direction. If we hit the down, it'll go backwards. Let's have it go backwards uh, to keep the balance of the rail over there. So once I hit start, it takes a picture, it moves, takes a picture, moves, and so on. The first thing that I would want to do if I was using this mode would be to calculate how long my steps were going to be in that distance. I would have to divide the, the distance by the number of steps to calculate the step length, which kind of seems unnecessary if you just go back and use auto distance, it'll do it for you. So I'm, I'm really not sure I see the advantage of this. 
If you aren't going to do the mathematics, it involves guessing and hoping that your step length is short enough to get everything in focus. So this is not really very different than, uh, the, than the other. Of course, to make sure that you get everything in focus, you need to know the distance from the front to the back of your subject. Uh, so presumably you would need to measure that some, somehow so that you make sure everything is in focus. Whereas on auto distance, you actually see that everything is in focus between the near and far points. Let's go back up to the mode, select the next one, distance per step. Here you pick the number of steps and the distance per step. Let's pick a longer distance again so that you can actually see it in action. And when we have it set like this, when you hit the start button, it will, it will move that number of steps that you selected and it will, each of them will be 1.3 millimeters in length. This again, that seems to miss out a rather important step that you get in the in the auto distance uh, mode and that is you select a number of steps and you select the distance per step which are great but it doesn't tell the device when to start and when to stop you can easily calculate how far the rail is going to move but if you don't already know the exact distance you want it to move because you haven't set it up in the device you're kind of guessing, uh, and uh, unless you have a pair of calipers to, to actually measure the total distance. And again, it's just a convoluted way of setting up the auto distance. So I, again, I'm not really sure what this mode does for you. We'll go to the next one, which is manual. So we have 1.3 millimeter steps, and then all we have to do is hit the start button uh, to go forwards or backwards. If we hit the up button, it'll, it'll move forward by that distance and then it'll take a picture and stop. We have to hit the button again to make it move again. And we can move it in the backward direction as well. I really like the manual mode. I, I think it offers something that uh, you can't get any other way. And that is you can set your very accurate step distance, but if you're outdoors shooting and the, the quality of the light is constantly changing, uh, particularly if there are clouds uh, scudding through the sky, you can time each of your steps and each of your shots to, to suit the uh, changing conditions. The next mode is continuous. We set the distance, in this case, 10 millimeters, and all we have to do is hit start or stop. You'll see this red light flash every time it takes a picture. Now, to do this, I went into configurations and greatly reduced my, uh, my T off time. Oh, well, I'll show you. I dropped my T off to one second, and uh, I believe I left my, um, my uh, T pulse at half a second. So the photographs should happen every one and a half seconds uh, in this continuous mode. So every uh, 1.5 seconds as it moves through a distance of 10 millimeters at a speed you'll remember of one millimeter per second, uh, these are the pictures that it'll take. So let's see how that looks. That is, by the way, it returning to home base at the end of the shot. We could do the same thing only in reverse by hitting the down button. Now it'll move backwards as it takes these shots. Now you'll see the rail moving, but also look at the trigger button. That is lighting every time the shutter fires and it stops firing as the uh, sled returns to its starting position. So if you're wondering how you would use continuous mode in macro photography, I am too. Having the camera moving as it's taking photographs seems to be um, a recipe for photographs that are out of focus. Generally speaking, 
in macro photography, I try to have my camera and my subject quite still when I'm photographing them. So the next is manual distance. The way this works is we set the amount of uh, distance per step, in this case, 1.3 millimeters. Uh, and then we select a start position using again the forwards and backwards buttons to move our camera. We'll select that for an end position. We'll select that and then up or down to start. And because this is in manual setting, it will only move this distance once and then it'll wait for us. So the first thing it does is return to the start. It takes a picture, it moves and it stops. If we want to move to the next one, it took a picture, then it moved. Now it stops and so on. We just keep doing that. Literally, you have to press the button every time you want the rail to move and another photograph to be taken. Now, this is actually a cool thing to use. Uh, if you're out in the field and you're trying to time your shots for the, for the best light and you're very patient, you could definitely sit. I wouldn't want to do that for a 290 shot stack, mind you. So the last mode we're going to look at is the auto step mode. Like a couple of the other ones, the auto step mode completely baffles me. You select the number of steps and a start and end position. So we'll leave the number of steps at 10, uh, but we'll pick a very uh, short uh, stack. So under start position, uh, I'll, I'll move it back a little bit. There we go. And then I'll select that as my start position. I'll move it forward to the end position. We'll make it very short. And then when I start it, it is going to place 10 steps into that tiny movement of the rail. So let's see what that looks like. First, it moves back to its starting position. And there you go. You, you decide how many steps you want but you don't decide how long you want the steps to be. You don't even decide how long the travel of the rail is going to be. All you do is select a start and an end position, and it will take the number of photographs you selected as it moves from the start to the end position. But if you don't know the distance between the start and the end, and you don't know the length of the steps, it seems to me like it would be pure luck if you were able to get a series of shots where everything was in focus. You can't even calculate the step length without knowing the distance the, between your start and stop positions. So you have really no way of knowing how long your step length is for the given magnification lens you're, you're using. So of all of the seven modes that are available, uh, the, uh, the only one that meets all of my needs every time is auto distance. And I would strongly recommend you start out there. It is the mode that gives you the most control. It involves no guesswork. It involves no calculations to make sure you've got the right number of steps or the right step length. And it just, uh, I think, makes the most sense. So uh, don't forget in auto distance, you select your step length, you select your start position and your stop position, and the computer does everything else uh, as far as determining how many shots you need. You won't know how many shots it's going to take until the thing starts moving. And then it'll show up in the progress menu. Uh, and you'll know that you have, you know, 57 shots left to go. Uh, so it will do that calculation for you and you don't have to worry about it. But if you're doing it the other way around and trying to fit a given number of steps into a given distance and you don't know what that distance is, it just uh, seems like a, a recipe for disaster. I think the easiest way to sum all this up 
is uh, if you just got the rail and you want to start using it right away, leave the configuration settings where they are at their default settings for now and choose auto distance as your mode of operation and leave all of the other stuff to play around with later. You'll be able to stack all day long and get superb pictures using this amazing piece of equipment if you just use that single program mode with the settings that are already in the device. You'll find as you uh, experiment further and further, you'll want to start changing some of those configuration settings, which is great. Uh, and uh, hopefully this will be a reference for you in the future to know what and why to change. As far as uh, the program modes, uh, I'll be excited to see if uh, any of you can uh, share with me what you're using your stack shop for and uh, if you found any of these other modes to be of value. Uh, other than the, the manual modes, which I think do have, uh, have some, some use, I'd particularly like to know if anybody's using the continuous mode and if so, what for? So that's all I have for you. I hope it was helpful. I mean, these uh, things can be a little bit daunting when you first start using them, but a little bit of practice, you'll be very comfortable with them. Hopefully this will be a useful reference for you when you start doing more high magnification stuff and you want to change some of your uh, configuration settings, you'll know how to do it. A downloadable PDF is available on my website in the article concerning these two videos. It's completely free and you are free also to share it with your friends, uh, download multiple copies and use it as wallpaper. Really anything you would like to do with it, none of my business. I wish each and every one of you a happy and safe and productive and healthy 2021. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I'll see you again in a few days. Take care.